What's up YouTube, my name is Terry Gators and I'm a music producer from Germany and today I show you how to use reference tracks with a free plugin called Span. But before we go into the tutorial, as always, if you don't want to miss my content, feel free to subscribe for free on my channel. Feel free to like and to comment below what you think and feel free to share if you think these tips are useful. So I would say let's go into the tutorial. So today I want to show you how you can use reference tracks with Span. Span is a great analyzer plugin and before I want to show you step by step what you need to do to use your reference tracks with Span to compare the balance of your mix with the balance of your desired mix, I want to quickly explain to you why it's important to have visual analyzers as well because I think many of us don't have the perfect treated room and because of that sometimes your ears are good to listen to your mix but when your room is not treated perfectly then the problem is that you get tricked or your ears get tricked. Th that means in your room maybe you hear problematic frequencies which are not really problematic in another listening environment and that's why it's good to have always some visual checks as well and that's why I love to use visual analyzers and not only my ears but I mostly go with my ears so and now I want to show you step by step how you can use the reference tracks with span so the first thing what you see here in Ableton is I imported three reference tracks and this works with three reference tracks perfectly into Ableton and I imported my my master or pre-master it doesn't matter what you have down here you can have your whole track your your pre-master anything you want to compare you can have it below here and that's it i imported all the necessary files i need so i choose some reference tracks and i choose my pre-master or master or what whatever my project file to compare and the first thing what you need to do is you need to go onto your master and then you need to go and find the span plugin and I have the Span plugin here. And it's important that you use the VST version of Span because the VST version of Span has the inputs and the AU version doesn't have those inputs we need. So make sure that you use the VST version of Span. And if we import it, I will drag it before my auto filter. And by the way, this auto filter is only here because of copyright issues. So you hear a filtered sound that doesn't matter because when you put when I put span before that auto filler, you will see the whole frequency. So or the whole frequency spectrum. So yeah, now I have span here, and span is a frequency spectrum analyzer. That means it shows me from 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz my frequencies from my track, and I want to, like I said, compare the balance of my mix to the reference tracks. And what we can do here, it's really cool feature of Span. We can send those reference tracks into Span and then compare our tracks to the reference tracks. So for example, when I play just my track, you will see that the frequency spectrum here gets filled. And another important thing is I looped the main part or the main section of my track with the main sections of the reference tracks. So I want to compare them when everything is playing. So um, let's play that and let's see how the spectrum analyzer here will display our frequencies. So I think, first of all, before we send the reference tracks into the span, it looks a little bit too detailed. And what I like to do all the time is when I do comparing, I go to this little, um, little option button here, and then I take the average time a little bit higher. And what I want to do is I want to increase the block size and I want to increase or I want to... Um, add in some smoothing so that, that you don't have so much little frequency details. And if I play my track again right now. You can see that the whole frequency spectrum looks a lot smoother and it's not so detailed in single frequencies and single peaks and stuff like that. And that's what we want. We want to compare the average kind of level to the reference tracks. And now when we want to have the reference tracks into span to compare that to our track, it's very easy to set up in Ableton. What I like to do is, first of all, I want to control or it's command G on Mac. Um, to group all those reference tracks, then let's call this one reference tracks. 
And then what you need to do is you need to go to every track and to every output and you should choose the master down here. And then on the master, you see the inputs for span. You see three and four, five and six, seven and eight. So we set the first reference track to three and four. We set the second one to master as well and five and six. And the last one, we set it to master as well and to seven and eight. Now we send all the three tracks into span. And what we need to do is we need to change the routing in span. So that's very easy to set up as well. You just need to go to the routing section here. And then you see the input routing. So for input three and four, we choose three and four. Five and six is five and six. 7 and 8 is 7 and 8. So that means that those inputs are used by our three reference tracks. And now what I also like to do is you can go down to the group names. And what I like is I will call them ref1, ref2 and ref3. And the first one is just our stereo track. So those are the labels now what we can choose to compare with. So right now, if, if we wanna play our track against the reference tracks, it's very easy to do. We just hit play and then we will see the reference underlay if we choose it from the drop down menu here. And another important thing is you will not hear any sound from the reference tracks because they are directly routed into span and span does not output them to the master, so you will not hear the reference tracks, but you will see the frequency spectrum. For example, if I play now my track and I have the reference track one here selected, I can compare those two frequencies. And what I like to do is the first thing when I want to compare them, I set the low end level. You see it on the reference track one here. It's a little bit higher than on my track. Then I set that the same kind of range that my track is and then I compare the rest. So that's how I do it. So let's do it. Let's make that a little bit quieter until we line up with our low end. So I think that's okay. You don't need to be perfectly accurate. You just need to have a little bit of alignment so that it's not too loud or too much difference. So you need to be a little bit in range. You need to not be completely perfect because every mix is different and you don't need to be perfectly. So if you wanna compare it right now to the reference track, what you can see here is, you can see the high end is here a little bit more. You have a little bit more frequencies here, there, at my track, it's a little bit of a dip here and stuff like that. Now it's coming in again. And the thing is with those reference tracks, you don't wanna have the perfect alignment with your track because every track, like I said, is different and that's just like a guidance. You can see if your high end, for example, is way off balance or if your low end is way off balance and that's a good kind of thing with the span plug and you can check if your overall balance is nearly in the range you want to have it. And the same is for reference track two and reference track three. If we want to select reference track two, we need to adjust the volume as well. So let's turn it down a little bit. And now we can see, okay, here it's a little bit fuller. Um, maybe we need to turn it down a little bit more, maybe like that. Then you can see, okay, we have a, a a little bit more of a gap here and now we can start analyzing why do we lack in a little bit of energy here and all this kind of stuff it depends on your mix or what you want to achieve and the same thing with reference track three we can turn that down as well and here we can see that is um, more in line with our track so the gap is still here as well. And maybe if we see on all three tracks that we mostly have a gap here, we can really try, try to think about why do we have this gap here? Why do we need to analyze that? Or why do we wanna change that? You can then ask your questions. And when you have more experience in your mix down and how it should sound, how the balance of your mix is good and all this kind of stuff and how your ears or when your ears are, are used to your listening environment, you will get better over time and then it's 
easier to make decisions. So that's just a kind of guideline and just a kind of method that you can use to make sure that your ears get not tricked by your room or something. So yeah, I hope this tip was useful. So that's it with the tip for today. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked the tip and I hope it will help you. And if it does, feel free to comment below. Feel free to like this video. Feel free to share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe so that you don't miss anything in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye and peace.